1995, uh, we were having a demonstration um, at, at the hospital from which I was, I was forced to resign. I, I say fired, but they forced me to be forced me to resign. And we were um, we were going to have a conference, a little meeting at the college where I, from which I graduated, which was right down the street. And then they wouldn't let me have the conference there. Uh, they got, it got uh, kind of nervous about it. So, uh, and particularly knowing that we were going to have a little march from the, from the college to the hospital, which is about a mile apart, where I had worked and then been fired, but where babies were still being circumcised. Uh, so. We we organized, so we did the conference somewhere else, but we continued to march from the College of Marin to Marin General Hospital, and we're getting out of the car in the parking lot across the street from the college, and um, I, I looked at Ken, who my partner at the time, and I, I said, um, uh, I forgot to bring my, my my camera for this, and I hear a voice. And I said, He said, I have a camera. And I turned around, and there's James Lowen, the professional photographer uh, who had started uh, documenting us. He was the first one that you did at, um, uh, at California Medical Association. Is that when you first? Yeah. So he first he first started uh, photographing us at the at the at the California Medical Association, our, one of our first protests. Um, at any rate, then he went into to doing vi uh, videos, and I hope you've all seen his YouTube channel, which is Bonobo 3D. He has more videos of an interview interviews are, are so profound, each and every one, hours and hours of not only his work, but our pleasure, well, pleasure, I talk about, <laughs> the language is funny, isn't it? Okay, at any rate, I, let me introduce James Lowen, thank you. <laughs> me to speak, I of course said yes. And then shortly afterwards, I thought about the work involved in trying to put together a slideshow. And I thought, oh, what have I gotten myself into? Because I, I'm trying to do something, another job in Vancouver right now that's taking a lot of mental energy. So this um, show, that, this, those pictures that you're going to see didn't really come together until really the last minute. And it's um, not good to apologize for something that you're doing beforehand, but I, I do make apologies for anything that's excluded because in the 25 years I've been doing this, uh, there's so much more than what you're going to see here. This is really just a smattering of some of the um, some of the events that I wanted to show to some of the younger people who are here who didn't, who haven't seen it. So um, yesterday when uh, Jen Williams was talking about being nervous about speaking, I said, well, you should just imagine everybody naked. So I'm imagining you all naked, and, <laughs> and I'm imagining everybody here with a foreskin. <laughs> so the 25 years I'm referring to, of course, is the 25 years since I began um, my intactivism. But if, uh, of course, the issue goes back before that, and there were some really great intactivists that came before us. So I uh, hope you'll see some of them here. And again, I apologize for any, any that are excluded. Um, so what we're talking about is our history and that's his history, her, her story. I realize my job is to help amplify our voices and make our, our message heard more widely. So 25 years ago in Vancouver, I was browsing through a gay and lesbian bookstore and uh, I had a paranormal experience. I felt that I was tapped on the shoulder and turned around expecting to see a friend of mine. And nobody was there, but I turned around the other way. Nobody was there, but I caught sight of a book in the far corner of the bookstore. And that was Jim Bigelow's book, The Joy of Uncircumcising. So I went over and picked the book up and I was very, very interested in it because I'd heard about uncircumcising, but I'd always thought it was uh, uh, something incredible that wouldn't, uh, that, I, uh, that I couldn't do. But here was a scholarly book, and what was really great about it was that there were so many voices in there of really intelligent people raised uh, against this, uh, this horrible issue. 
So I bought the book and took it home and read it backwards and forwards for a couple days. And I uh, realized in the back of the book was a list of organizations of people that were fighting this issue. So I wrote to them, Marilyn Milos of No Cirque and Tim Hammond of, um, is Tim here? Mm -hmm. Oh good, Tim Hammond of No Harm and uh, Wayne Griffiths of Recap. Wayne is no longer with us. And uh, soon I got a videotape. Oh, wait a minute. This is um, a picture of me in, at the age where I realized that I had been circumcised. I'm in the bottom right corner there. And uh, this was a, a shock that went through me and uh, it was very gently explained by a, a six-year-old playmate who was intact. So you were six? I was seven. So I sent away to um, No Harm for a videotape and uh, on that videotape I saw for the first time a video of a baby boy being cut. On this video I see a baby boy being circumcised. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing because the baby was screaming and he was obviously completely feeling what any of us would feel if someone was doing that to us. And it, it was also shocking to see that knowing that pretty much everyone I'd ever mentioned this subject to in my life had said, oh well it was done when we were babies and it was no big deal. But following that scene was a scene of a little girl, and uh, she might have been about two years old, somewhere in the streets of Egypt. And uh, she was so conscious of what was happening, and she was begging. And the, the, the seeing that was what was my resolve to fight this for, the, for until we're done. So I, tr I tried to figure out what can I do? You know, my skill was photography. And uh, I, I r realized that No Harm was having a um, uh, demonstration in San Francisco at the California Medical Association. So I drove to San Francisco and I met Tim Hammond and uh, Marilyn Milos and Wayne Griffiths and uh, Jim Bigelow who had written The Joy of Uncircumcising and various other wonderful people who were present at this event. Um, so these are some early uh, buttons that were made to uh, for the protests and here we are making protest signs in the basement of the church where uh, Recap met and this was the first protest I had attended. You see Marilyn's grandson on the right there, Matthew. What year was that? This was 1993. And there's Jim Bigelow, author of Joy of Uncircumcising. And there's Patrick Brown, who I think is, Pat, is he with us? He was here yesterday. And at this point, Tim had noticed that uh, up in the windows of the building was someone wearing a bow tie. <laughs> Looking down on us. And there's Richard Angel. He was a very active early into activist. He's still active online. Steve Scott with a great sign. Gary Stubblefield, who, like some into activists, come and go. He just disappeared. I don't know where he is these days. There's Tim with a playing the sound of a baby being screaming, being cut. Henny Lightfoot Klein. This is one of my favorite intactivists, and uh, she said so many things that were so profound, and she wrote a wonderful book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. And uh, two of the things I remember that she said was, the answer to this issue is going to probably come from somewhere way out in left field. So if anybody's out in left field and knows what it is. <laughs> And the other, <clears throat> the other thing I remember her saying was that uh, I, I interviewed her and I asked her, you know, I, uh, one of the questions I ask everybody is, what, you know, how are you an intactivist? And, uh, and uh, sorry, I'm going blank. 
Oh yeah, and, and, and you know, how do you keep doing this? Because it's so emotionally exhausting. And she said, well, once you know about this, you can't not do something. So I think that really speaks to, you know, all the people who are here, who have been here again and again and again and again. So, oh, this is Charles Bonner, an early, uh, one of the lawyers who worked on uh, circumcision malpractice cases, would you say, Marilyn? Yeah? He still does, eh? Yeah, he was supposed to be here, but he got called oh. Alabama for a case. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm glad he is with, still. Okay. We have a case. Great. Okay. Very, very elo eloquent speaker. Marilyn Milos. And her grandson, Matthew, who's now fully grown, 34 years old. And he gave a wonderful speech. He said, uh, if it weren't for my grandmother, I'd be in the same condition as a lot of you men here. <laughs> and this is Jed Diamond who wrote uh, on men's rights. And afterwards, I believe we tried to present something or other to the uh, medical association, but we were barred by a line of police. And when I was getting this slideshow ready, a friend of mine who helps me and critiques a lot of my stuff said, well, isn't that interesting? Because his awareness of our association with the police is with regards to the bloodstained men and the fact that we've had so many good uh, interactions with the police over the last few years. So maybe there's been a change that way. Yes, it is. Yeah. So when I got back to Vancouver, I'm trying to figure out what do I do with these pictures. A friend of mine uh, who worked for the West End Community Center had booked uh, showcase where I was going to be showing some of my photos, but they were going to be portraits and you know pretty pictures that would appeal to the <laughs> the people. And so I, I decided instead I'm going to, going to use the pictures from the protest and newspaper clippings and things and make a display that was something like this. And it was actually this is not the original, but it was huge. It was like you know I don't know 20 feet by 10 feet or maybe 20 feet by five feet. And uh, a, f a friend of mine in Vancouver, an in a wonderful intactivist, Jacqueline Mayer, said, well, I'm go coming the first day because I want to see it before they pull it down. <laughs> and she got there about 15 minutes after nine, which was the first morning that it was up and it was already down. That's okay, because I was sort of ready for that. And uh, I called the local, uh, press and I got a front page news story. <laughs> and some good television coverage. But I don't have any video in this. I have a video, but it's not in this presentation. So our next protest was uh, in Seattle, Washington at the manufacturers of the Circumstraint, Olympic, Olympic Medical in uh, November of 94, I think. And here you see Marilyn, Steve Scott, and on the left, Je Jeannie Parvati Baker. Janine Parvati Baker. And uh, here's another picture of Janine with her daughter, Haley. And there's Dwayne Jordy from Hawaii, who was another wonderful early intactivist. And you know, I thought about this my, my thoughts about this picture are different now than when I saw it originally. I think that a sign should also read, torture should not be the first experience of a baby. And I think it was kind of, uh, you know, we, we all had it, and we knew that we were zapping this place that, you know, on this really dismal November morning, the last thing these people were thinking was that they were gonna suddenly see a protest of 40 people in front of their place. And there's Tim playing the, Sound and Dr. George Denison and Martin and Tina. And we laid flowers in the circumstraint in memory of all the boys who have been severely damaged and killed by circumcision. And then Marilyn attempted to uh, present it. Mary? Oh, good. And Janine was there too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and tried to present these flowers, Mary Conant and, and Marilyn, to, to the owner, the manufacturer of the circumstraint 
and uh, he was very resistant. He didn't want to take it. <laughs> So this is just a local newspaper. I was able to uh, get one of the photos from the early protest, you know, illustrating this was widely, you know, circulated a little free paper in Vancouver. And this is a picture of a friend of mine who was restoring, and that ended up in a, an article in a gay and lesbian newspaper in Vancouver. And then I just want to talk a little bit about the symposia because this, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a full range of pictures here. There are just a few to represent, but this is um, Dick Gregory, who was a very famous uh, human rights activist and comedian who spoke. I think he was a keynote speaker at the, um, was it the third symposium? Yeah. Maryland. Yes, sir. Yeah. W and wonderful, wonderful stories he told. And here's Richard DeCebra, who's holding up a index card showing the uh, surface area that's removed, and he's the uh, inventor of the word intactivist. And the fellow holding the microphone is Barry Ellsworth, who's the filmmaker that made The Nurses of St. Vincent. And here's Elizabeth Noble. Yeah. Yeah, these are all from the Maryland Symposium. And here's Joseph Chilton Pierce, who's a wonderful author of a number of books about child and human development. Magical child. And here's Hanny and Marilyn and Janine. And here's John Erickson and, yeah. John Erickson was one of the early intactivists who was just tireless and, and uh, he had collected all of the letters he had written and self-published them. And this was before mainstream intactivism. Uh, his, his letters, every time there was an article in Playboy magazine or Good Housekeeping or wherever, there would be a letter by John Erickson, and his letters were so eloquent. At one point I said to him, John, I'm struggling with words for something, like, do you mind if I just use your, your terminology? And he said, oh, James, feel free to quote me or use any of my words however you like, but you'll soon find you'll, you'll be off to the races and you'll have all the words yourself. And oddly enough, recently I had somebody say to me, oh, do you mind if I use your words? And I'm like, <laughs> Yes, yes, and I'm sorry, you know, again, the, the, this slideshow is incomplete because I should have a couple of shots of that, but I don't, so. So then here's another protest that we, uh, at that same time, I think, eh, Marilyn, the same? Yeah, and I can't remember what the name, Responsible Medicine, okay. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of Betty, and there, there are so, too many pictures to show today. Here's Dwayne Jordy showing his birth certificate and uh, the last time that he had, uh, you can see his footprints on there, and uh, as he said, it was the last time there was a record of him being intact. And he tore it up and burned it. So I just wanna talk about creative collaboration. <clears throat> I, I feel that the, the best thing that we can do as creative people is to collaborate with others because the sum of our collaboration is usually greater than, you know, what we can do on our own. So, you know, my earliest collaboration in this movement was with Tim Hammond. And uh, in, initially he made a wonderful film called Whose Body, Whose Rights. And I was privileged to join in and take uh, still photos. In the upper right here, on the upper left, you see Miriam Pollack, who's uh, wonderful Jewish intactivist who wrote a really incredible essay called Redefining the Sacred. If you ever find that, it's really worth reading. And Tim had this idea for a poster with two babies, and uh, we've got them out in the lobby if anybody wants one. And he had another idea for a poster where the babies were circumcising the doctor. Do you know, I had uh, about 10 copies and I meant to bring them and I couldn't quite fit them in the suitcase, so next time. The pivotal figure in this issue is uh, Van Lewis who protested with his brother in 1970 at the hospital in Tallahassee, Florida where he was born and where they were cut. And uh, those signs that he had made were confiscated but uh, he recreated them. I really wish Van was here. 
and here's Gary Burlingame, who's another really key intactivist who was incredibly active online and started a lot of uh, stuff that is still going today. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. And a while ago, um, at the celebration that happened in uh, DC, uh, when Intact America started, uh, they were celebrating Marilyn and uh, ha uh, Hanny and Soraya. And so I, I made a film uh, of Intactivist history, but Tim gave me this picture and he said, There's a, here are these two Intactivists. It's somewhere from the late 70s or early 80s. We don't know who they are, but maybe they're masked because they don't want to be known. Maybe they're in front of a hospital. And then pretty soon I found out who was in those, under those masks. <laughs> So a little bit of history about the blood stain because it's something I'm very proud to be associated with. Initially, uh, Richard Dunker in England wore this outfit that he created on the street in bare feet for the first time, and uh, that had a great deal of impact. He's seen here in Germany. And then Jonathan Conti phoned me and said, I'm thinking about making some of these for the protest in, uh, was it AAP? for New Orleans, yeah. How many should I make? And I said, mm. he said, I think maybe five. I said, either f a, a, an odd number is photographs better, maybe seven, but we were uncertain whether anybody would want to wear them. And uh, you can see Jonathan doing it impeccably. He's got bare feet just like Richard Dunker did. But when the bloodstained costumes came out, immediately people jumped into them. It was like we should have probably had nine of them. And when the uh, conference participants came out, this is what greeted them, and we watched their mouths fall open and their cell phones come out. <laughs> that was the first thing that they did. The second day, the, the whole front of the building did a photograph. Yeah. The word had gotten out. Yeah. And it was even bigger. It was, it was amazing. It was a moment in intact, intactivist history. And here's Jonathan. And of course, that became Brother K made this wonderful graphic. Quick story, when we were at uh, Pride in San Francisco two years ago, we were marching through the crowds trying to find the, uh, the booth, and uh, Brother Kay was carrying, helping carry the, I think, Marilyn, you were there, and uh, people were carrying this huge banner through the crowd, and I heard these two young guys say, there go the bloodstained men. They protest all across America. <laughs> and here's Brother Kay with the next generation. And then they're, <laughs> I think this is, this is a work of uh, Olivia and Ryan Chauvin, I believe. Okay, how's my time, Marilyn? Okay, I better wrap this up. Um, okay, so I'm trying to figure out, okay. So my philosophy is monkey see, monkey do. And that's what's behind all of my uh, videos, is that if I can get uh, people on screen who others can uh, uh, relate to, maybe somebody else is going to see a mother, a nurse, a father, a, a son speaking out, and they're going to have the license to speak out too. Plus, I love monkeys. These are capuchin monkeys, super smart. So uh, my... Uh, channel is Bonobo 3D, and bonobos, if you don't know, are uh, apes who are very, very uh, specialized. They live in a very small part of Africa, and uh, everybody should know what bonobos are because we need to protect them. And act like them. And act like them, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, these are just a few thumbnails from the videos, and I, I thank everybody who's participated, and I just want to quickly say that there are many people who have you know, I've asked to, to videotape and they'll say, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I would really say. And then as soon as the camera's on them, they're like, full steam ahead. Intact of us always know what to say. But I recognize that some of these people have, you know, come out of their own comfort zone to go public. So 
very grateful for everybody who's spoken out. Thanks, Rosemary. But, you know, I consider each of these a really precious creative collaboration. So thank you to everybody who's done this. The, the, real, uh, the, the inspiration for this channel was Marilyn's uh, symposia because I saw these wonderful speakers and I thought, oh, you know, they should be brought to the public. Plus, you know, how do you... Uh, fortunately, it all coincided with YouTube suddenly being there and there was actually a venue to be able to put our message out, so, yeah, good timing. And uh, I've sort of abandoned my notes, but uh, one of the things that I wanted to say was that, um, you know, in the 90s was a very fertile period for activism, and uh, it was a uh, act up, you know, in reference to the AIDS crisis. Uh, there was a whole new generation of gay, lesbian, uh, queer activism that was happening there. Um, so one of my other projects is digitizing old uh, video because you know many of us, including uh, Marilyn, have collected you know a vast library of video from you know pre YouTube days. So fortunately, you know we I, I'm very glad we've got stuff that uh, otherwise would be completely lost. And you know, including um, an interview with Phil Donahue, uh, interviewing. Uh, uh, Thank you, Ed Wallerstein, who was, uh, you know, if you haven't read his book, he, he wrote this book on the issue and it stands today as, you know, as current as anything. <clears throat> and here's George uh, debating some bozo in a bow tie. <laughs> Except it's a rare picture of Ed Schoen without a bow tie. Oh, here he is, enjoying a comic book. How did you get that picture? Ask David Wilton. <laughs> oh, he's dead now. So, um, in collecting intactivist history, I'll speed this up a bit. Um, early in the first episode of uh, Foreskin Man comic book, there was reference to the Genital Integrity uh, Muse Museum of Genital Integrity in San Diego, which was, of course, just a uh, fictional idea but um, I think it's a very good idea. And here's George Vukovic on the left with Rosemary, and he's collected uh, a lot of intactivist uh, paraphernalia. Here he's got uh, three copies of Rosemary's book, different editions, ready for an autograph. And uh, here's some Gomco clamps. And George said this about it. When I run into something like this one, I can't help but wonder how much pain it has caused directly and cascaded into additional generations of American males. Or when I find a Mogan clamp that has a few marks on the doctor side, but plenty of marks on the patient side, I wonder how many bad outcomes that clamp was involved in, like where a doctor was literally using it the wrong way all these years. I wonder what my whole hardware collection would look like laid out on a warehouse floor, and to think that each piece was likely used at least a th hundred times, and sometimes possibly thousands. And I've got several hundred of them. The scale of the pain contained in them is almost impossible to comprehend. Uh, George Vukovic, am I pronouncing his name right? Vukovic. Vukovic, thank you, Franny. So I envisioned the uh, Museum of Genital Integrity would have the um, mobile education unit of Intaction parked right outside, maybe circulating around the neighborhood. I also would envision that Jonathan's bike would be there. Unfortunately, his mother and father came and collected it. And I think Jonathan would still be alive if his mother had apologized to him. This is a picture of the um, Jim Crow Museum that looks at racism and slavery and the Holocaust Museum in Washington. And these are just some group shots showing intactivists at various events. We're getting bigger. 
And this is a really interesting creative collaboration. I got a call from Dee uh, Dolores uh, San Giuliano, and uh, she had a videotape from a protest that she and these wonderful people had uh, attended and videotaped. I don't usually like to work with other, you know, it's too much work, working with somebody else's um, amateur videos, but when I saw this, it was so great. And uh, if you haven't seen this protest, the, these guys really upped the ante. And thanks very much to Daniel Rold. Is he here? Daniel here? No. Anyway, you've got to see this video. He's amazing. Oops. And here's another collaboration is uh, Mama Michelle on, on uh, YouTube. And she wrote me saying she had, uh, she could videotape herself only for five minutes at a time with her phone. And could I, she sent me the, the, the footage and I would piece them together. And I started watching this, I'm thinking, she's the daughter of a circumciser and she has come out against her own mother and uh, she, she's prolific. And you know, she's got babies on her lap and she's making these videos and everybody should be watching them and commenting and Yes, her mother is a circumciser. And what's her last name? Uh, well, I won't say her last name because she doesn't, but she's Mama Michelle on, on YouTube. So here's Charlie uh, Susie Chapler, one of many wonderful and intersex people who are protesting with us, and a great sign made by Jonathan. And I like this sign a lot. <laughs> Seth Anderson. And this is one of my absolute favorite signs. And... Uh, a few days ago on Facebook, I know I, 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 when I see these signs, I'm like, who made that one? Who thought this up? This is really good. And uh, she's here. Uh, this is, uh, this is um, Taryn holding the sign, and you can see the woman on the left is giving her, her, her feelings about it. <laughs> so Cynthia Maloney is the originator of, of this sign. And a few days ago on Facebook, she posted, Today is the third year anniversary of the sign that It's Not Your Mother's Penis was conceived. In the original post, Cynthia had reported, Today a young man walked by and told me I, he was circumcised. I asked him if it was his choice. He said, no, it was my parents' choice. Then I asked him how often his mother used his penis. <laughs> where, where's Cynthia? Oh, there you are. Um, so, you know, seasoned intactivists like Cynthia say they can quickly turn any conversation into one about this issue. <laughs> so, mixing issues. You know, some people, some people say that we shouldn't uh, mix issues, but uh, there are some issues that align easily with intactivism, and one of them is uh, atheism. And uh, here, of course, is uh, uh, Christopher Hitchens, who was one of our, our greatest as far as arguing this uh, and debating with uh, religious people about it. And there's another group that's gaining momentum very, very quickly, and those are people who are advocating for animal rights and for plant-based diets. And on the left is Julia Green's sign. So who do you cut? Who do you kill? Who do you eat? I say these issues should be mixed because in England, uh, in London, England, very recently, there was 5,000 people marching for animal rights. And it's easy, easy to convince somebody who's for animal rights to extend those rights to the human animal. These are bonobos. And as Brother K says, we should always remember when we're fighting this issue that every mother wants to protect her baby. So I'm going to leave you with this picture by Pete Kay. Now it's a recent ACOG uh, demonstration. Yeah. So thank you everybody for being here.